All right, so one more thing I want to mention is simply one way that I practice that might help you out when, especially when developing these strokes or, or working on sort of the, the individual aspects of Sugaru Shamisen playing, and that is doing very tiny exercises in isolation, just focusing on bocce technique. And what I mean by that is that I will sit down with the phone, I'll use it as my metronome, and I'll simply work on, um, you know, just these strokes that I talked about, just downstrokes or triple strikes or, or um, hajiki, kamashi, things like that. And um, I'm doing so in, in a way that I can get uh, large speed gains. Um, I'm not quite fast enough to play Tsugaru Shamisen up to the, sort of the proper tempos which I found to be at the bottom end 230 BPM and then the high end about 270 BPM. So, um, so I simply work on these, on these things in, in isolation and that helps me um, focus on just my bocce technique or just my left hand in the case of hajiki and kamashi. And um, this has helped me a lot and it's sort of, by isolating these things, we're not getting worried about, you know, uh, what's the next phrase or What's my left hand doing to play these notes or blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm just focusing on the things that matter, which is just my bocce technique or, again, just, you know, correct hajiki and stuff like that. And so um, the drills that I do are, first of all, uh, just triple strikes. Sort of a heck of a way to start a practice session <laughs> with the, probably the hardest thing. But I'll simply sit down with the metronome and um, the metronome would be clicking just one, two, one, two, something like that. And then I'll just try to perform downstrokes on the one, the and of one and two. So it'll be one and two, one and two. So it'll be like tick, 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 tick. tick. Yeah, something, something that I affected. <laughs> I should probably actually bust out a metronome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, something like that. So we have tick, 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 and I'll be dun, 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 something like that. And you notice I'm only doing it three strokes, or three down strokes, one, tri three trick one set of triple strikes. I don't, I don't know how to phrase this, I'm sorry. And, um, and then I'm thinking about it for a moment. I'm focusing on what, first of all, did I do it right or wrong? If I did it right, you know, congrats to me. And then I think about what did that feel like and how can I try to do it again? And if I did it wrong, then I'll ask myself, what went wrong? In the case of triple strikes, it'll probably be that I got caught on the, up, on the wind up for the next downstroke, um, in which case I will try to change what I did in order to make things happen, in this case, um, I'll try to be focusing on that that only deviation that I mentioned and um, the sensation of sort of coming across the string and making sure to clear everything. As far as the tempo, I when, when I'm doing this practice, I find a tempo that's comfortable for me. It could be, you know, 180 BPM or something. And then I will set my metronome to a tempo that's ever so slightly higher than what I feel comfortable playing it at. So if it's 180 BPM that I feel comfortable at, I might say it, set it to 185 or 190, just something outside my comfort zone, something that's gonna force me to make mistakes. And then when I make those mistakes, I simply ask myself, what can I change to make things happen at this tempo? So it does two things. It introduces errors into my playing that I have to fix in order to progress, which means my technique is gonna become better. And the second thing it does is it gets me used to playing at tempos that I'm not comfortable with. You know, the reason why I'm not comfortable at those tempos is simply because I'm not practicing at those tempos. So eventually if I say, if I'm comfortable at 180 BPM and I'm practicing at 190, eventually 190 will just become comfortable for me and I'll probably get it right eventually. So then I'll bump it up to 200 BPM or, you know, 195 or something like that. And I will keep doing that and probably pretty sizable chunks um, up until I get to 230 BPM. And then at that point, you know, I might stop setting the tempo so high just for a little bit, just to focus on like what's really happening 
you know, just solidify what kind of technique I developed at that point. And then I'll try to continue to work my way up to 270 at least so I can play, uh, you know, fast Tsugaru Shamisen pieces like Akita ni Karabushi or John Kata or Kido no Hibiki, you know, at tempos and stuff like that. And um, I have a really quick list of the exercises that I play personally. The first, again, was probably just triple strikes, you know. Um, so if, again, on the metronome, that'll be one, that'll be one and two. So one and two, one and two, right? And I'll do that until I get faster. Um, the next thing I'll work on is hajiki. I'll, um, this is something that I have trouble with in Kiri no Hibiki, uh, which I'm trying to learn. So I'll simply play position uh, 16 or whatever this is, uh, hopefully with the correct pitch. And then I'll just practice hajiki for a little bit, you know. And I'll just do that, you know, just, uh, you know, four, four beats, four measures, or two measures, whatever, whatever it is. Again, I'll be doing this with the metronome, but I'll just be trying to get it, the hajiki clean and even uh, with the metronome, you know, trying to get to a proper tempo. And then once I get to sort of the high end tempo, I'll just be focusing on what it feels like to really solidify it. Practice it, say, well, let's work at 230 BPM right now. So I might do something like this. Oh. And I think to myself, did I get it even? Did it, everything sound clearly? And the answer was no. So I'll just keep working at it. Whoops. Ba, 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 ba. For this, it might be, uh, might be beneficial to just just start doing downstrokes and skewy on the on the beats, and then bring in the hajiki afterwards. Something like that. And uh, when I'm focusing on hajiki, um, I'll focus on the sensation of maybe just as my ring finger comes down, striking the wood. Um, in between the strings so that I get a clean sound without accidentally performing a triplet or something like that. You know, it's, it's really easy to do something like this, like... And I'm not trying to go for that. I'm just trying to go like one and two and. So one of the next things that I'll practice is uh, Kamashi. Just a, a simple 4300 phrase on the Sanuito. So something like this. For this, some of the things that I'll focus on are first of all, um, getting a good pull off from position of four to position three on the and of one, one and, one and. And then on the second beat, I'm performing skewy, and then also bringing my ring finger back up, making sure it's up and it's not you know hanging down. So something, one and two, and all of a sudden my ring finger is back up my index finger is up and ready to perform the hajiki on the and of two. So one, and, two, and, and then again my ring finger is ready to come back down. And um, this is one I've had, been having a little bit of trouble with, so I'll slow it down a little bit. And um, it might sound something like this. Oops, a lot of trouble with it. And I usually wouldn't even go on that long, maybe just twice through. And um, and again, one of the things I focus on with this is again, good pull off from position four to position three. Um, make sure that's nice and even on the and of one. Um, good skewy and then a good clean hajiki with the index finger. Something I, I might focus on sort of Trying to get my index finger between the San Noito and the Nino Ito so that I get a really nice um, hajiki that's clean and doesn't accidentally um, doesn't accidentally hammer on to position three. And I'll also practice that on the, the Nino Ito, uh, something like this. Um, of course I can't pull my, my ring finger far or down as much. But um, it's something I'll work on because you know you'll you'll hear it in the beginning of uh, the first part of Rokudan, right? Oh. And I've, uh, <laughs> something I might want to practice too is that transition from the Ushido Bachi on the Nino Ito to uh, to the Maya Bachi Kamashi on the same string. 
I might just do something like that. Um, of course, with the metronome. I'll also work on a 4303 three phrase, something like this. Um, again, um, focusing on clean hajiki on, on the hajiki of the three, where the index finger comes down to fret the note as the ring finger strikes it. I'll focus on uh, the same things I think about with my ring finger with regards to hajiki, but also just making sure that when my hand sort of comes together like this, that everything's happening at the right time, that I don't accidentally, you know, strike the string before I, you know, fret it or something like that. Um, other drills that I do might be um, Oshibachi. Oshibachi is a good one. Um, if you're working on Nakita Nikatabushi, you might want to work on this one. Simply, uh, so when I'm focusing on Oshibachi, it might be something like this. Um, I'll just simply do it like twice maybe. Something like that. Uh, I'll focus on getting the Oshibachi really clean and even. I'll make sure that it won't be like, you know, that it's not uneven. Um, I'll have to focus on making sure that I'm striking the right string on the second beat, you know, one, one and two, right? Um, so I might be conscious of kind of the deviation that's occurring uh, during that stroke. And um, I'll do that from the Nino Ito, the Sano Ito, like pseudo, you know, Akita Nikatabushi for that. And then I'll also work on it with the Ichi no Ito to the Nino Ito. And, um, you know, something like that might come up in Rokudan or Jonkata or Kido no Hibiki. I'll do something like this. Um, what other drills do I got? Um, I'll also work on descending triple strikes. Uh, you might come across this in a lot of Tsugaru stuff where you have to strike um, the San no Ito followed by the Ni no Ito twice, something like this. This is something that's pretty tough for me. It's a little easier than triple strike somehow, I don't know why. For this particular drill, I'll really be focusing on the feeling of where the Ni no Ito is and making sure that I strike that string because I miss it a lot. Oh. So it's pretty tough, but I'll probably just do that phrase over and over and over again. Um, as specific exercises that I have trouble with, I might work on the uh, descending alternate part of uh, Kida no Hibiki, something like this. This is, of course, not an exercise in isolation, but just something that I have trouble with, so I'll make sure that I have, you know, good intonation and each stroke is nice and even and I'm not getting caught on the skui or something like that. And uh, one of the last things I'll work on is um, another descending line from Kido no Hibiki, this time with uh, Hajiki, uh, this uh, little bit. So that little bit, I'll probably um, end, end it coming back up to the 10. Because we'll, we'll need to perform it twice in, in the context of the song. And um, you know, I'm focusing on making sure that I'm using my, my index nail to get a nice clear tone while well, sustained and making sure that I'm getting an, a nice clear hajiki again feeling the sensation of the wood um, on the way down to this downstroke I don't accidentally want to perform a little triplet I um, also make sure that my hand position is pretty good going down it's really easy to change my hand position when I get down to this position four and then all of a sudden my hajiki um, isn't as good or isn't as clear so That'll just be something that I work on personally. You might have, uh, you know, parts that you find difficult in songs that you're learning, and it might be ideal to maybe isolate, maybe just one measure, or just two beats, something like that, um, and practice those in isolation, just working specifically on parts that you find challenging, um, because it's really inefficient to try and work through a whole tune if you're just having trouble with one measure or something like that. Um, so again, it's good to practice the metronome. Uh, maybe if you're working on gaining speed, it might be ideal to set the metronome a little bit higher than you're comfortable with. And um, yeah, just working on isolation is not the only way to practice, but it might help a lot with bocce technique and just you know little things that you have trouble with instead of you know trying to practice Rokudan all the time just to get that Kamashi bit at the end.